Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today we're talking all about the Grand Warden, how to uh, use him properly, especially how to use the Eternal Tomb to keep your troops alive. Um, so we're going to talk about Town Hall uh, 11 and 12, have replays from both Town Hall level, um, to really give you guys a, a good picture of how you want to use the Grand Warden because it's so important to your attacks to being able to three star versus getting a high percentage to one or two stars. Um, so anyway, uh, this was a pretty good example, maybe a little bit early here on the Grand Warden. One of the main points I'm going to make as we go through this video is you want to hit the Warden's ability just as your troops are lurching forward. And that's what I'm, t I'm talking about, a kill squad. So this is a Witch Bowler attack. Um, which is basically one big kill squad, but for other ground-based kill squads, um, particularly ones that have like bowlers in them, there's that moment where maybe you're dropping like your first rage, they're encountering the CC, maybe defensive heroes, where your troops lurch forward and start to spread out a little bit as they enter the base. And that's the moment when you want to use the Warden's ability, generally speaking. If you're looking for like a, a general rule, that's one of the best ones I can give you, is right before, or basically right as they're doing that lurch, because that's when they spread out, that's when they're taking the most damage. One way to look at every, uh, look at the, the Grand Warden and his ability is that it's just giving your troops a certain number of hit points, and you wanna add as many extra hit points as you can. And basically what that means is the damage your troops are taking while they're invincible under the Warden's Eternal Tomb, um, add that up. That's the hit points you're saving that otherwise would be taken. So basically you're adding these hit points to your troops. Uh, this was a very nice opener. Um, creative, dropping in the Siege Machine, the Battle Blimp, with a Freeze and a Haste to get those loons. Almost gets that Inferno so close, doesn't quite get it. Doesn't end up costing the attack, but it was a very good opener, sneaky, um, really fun to watch that. And then he's just going to suicide the heroes, and this is going to be a good example of how to use the Warden in a Laloon attack. And when we're talking uh, Laloon versus using him with your heroes, like do you want to use him in your kill squad or with your balloons, um, generally speaking... I like the kill squad better, but for a suicide hero attack, there's much more value using the uh, the warden in your your air portion. So it depends what will affect more troops. If it's a huge kill squad, that's typically where you're going to want to use the warden. So look at where you're deploying your troops. Also look at your kill squad. How far do you want it to get into the base? If there's a if there's like a good stopping point where you realize your troops are going to die anyway, you might as well just not use the warden there. Let your kill squad get the value and just look to get more value from the, uh, the Laloon or the Hogs or whatever by using the Warden there. So you can see the Warden is deployed uh, with the Balloons, that's how you want to do it, behind the Lava Hounds. Don't drop him first in case he hits like a Seeking Air Miner, gets targeted by something. And then, um, nice and patient on the Warden here, you'll see that he's used as the troops pass over the Town Hall, which is sometimes basically you have to do it uh, at Town Hall 12 because the... Uh, explosion from the town hall going down would otherwise take out a bunch of balloons. So that should be your number one priority. Use it there if you need to. Uh, but otherwise, you should look to use it to save a big cluster of balloons and try to get as many balloons in his range as possible. So people are often tempted to use it early when there's still like a bunch of troops left up. And it doesn't work as well because the, you're not using it to protect your lava hounds. You're using it to protect your balloons. So if you still have a bunch of lava hounds tanking and, you know, there's not multi-infernos and wizard towers just raining in damage on your balloons, if it's mainly the lava hounds that are being targeted, don't use the eternal tomb because all you're doing is protecting your lava hounds a little bit but it's not getting much value sometimes you want to save it especially on a spread out base and use it when the balloons are getting targeted um, after all the lava hounds are dead maybe an air defense is locked on i like saving it a little bit longer in la luna attacks compared to ground uh, army compositions but um once again, these all depend on the attack, and you kind of have to get a feel for it. But hopefully this can kind of give you guys some, some guidelines that you can go by. Um, this next one, uh, well, I don't quite recall. Okay, this one used a, a ground-based siege machine uh, with the heroes. Uh, the warden, I think, was... It looks like the warden was saved. And this is, I think, a good illustration of the point I was making earlier where you can see that there's not a whole lot of like space for everything to go in beyond getting just like those 
three compartments cleared out basically. Um, so the Eternal Tomb from the Grand Warden wouldn't have gotten much more value. Um, I think the Queen might not even go down, or the Queen does go down, but you can see um, there's two layers of walls they have to go through. The Eagle's not reachable, uh, the Inferno's not, well, it's barely reachable, probably wouldn't uh, make much of a difference. So the Warden wasn't going to be good there because there wasn't anything else that was immediately immediately accessible that was going to really help the Laloon. The pathing was already created nicely, so at this point just saves the Warden, throws him behind the balloons, and then we'll see the value he gets here. Um, good Laloon deployment, kind of helping push everything towards the middle with those reinforcement balloons. And then right here, I think the Warden's ability is going to be used in just a moment. You can see he stays nice and central amid all these balloons. Then boom, perfect. Um, balloons were getting targeted every which way. All the Lava Hounds were dead. There was the Inferno. It was basically they were spread out in like a circle around him. Um, so that was really awesome because at that moment, probably more than at any other point, balloons were starting to take damage and go down. Um, so those two, three seconds of... Uh, invincibility does make a huge difference and in La Luna attacks I love being patient with the Warden's ability I think that's where the most value is gotten because otherwise you have Lava Hounds tanking it's not the same as a Witch Bowler where you don't have as many tanks um, so generally speaking you, you might want to save it although also a good use for it I don't think we're gonna see this but a good use for it in a La Luna attack is using it on the skeletons if you're doing a attack that doesn't get the queen with the kill squad or with your heroes or whatever, and you're depending on the skeleton spell to take out the queen, then you can use it to protect balloons. And also, if the skeletons are in range, um, they can take out the queen in the duration of his eternal tomb. So even if there's a bomb tower or a mortar, um, as long as you have enough skeletons up at that very moment, um, then you can pop it and those skeletons that are alive at that moment will get the ability and they can take out the queen, especially under a rage. So keep that in mind as well. Um, this next one, also a uh, witch bowler. We're going to take a look at just various types of attacks. And um, where is the warden? There he is. Uh, this was a, a pretty good example. Um, there's the lurch right there. I think this might have been a tiny bit early as well, but not, not bad. Um, pretty good use of it. But um, what I was saying earlier is you want to look for that lurch where you, the troops kind of start to pile up. Then it seems like they shoot forward. Um, and maybe it's as they get through the CC troops that happens. That's why we see it so much. By the way, look at that siege machine getting all the way. Uh, I like the P.E.K.K.A. in it as well. It's a good thing to bring sometimes, especially if you get by both Infernos. It can tank. It can do damage. Um, it's a nice troop to have there. So uh, look for that lurch. Um where the troops are kind of piled up, maybe they're in a rage and a heal, you're just kind of keeping them there, then boom, they kind of shoot forward and spread out. And that's where you want to use it, um, especially coinciding with the king's ability, because when you hit the king's ability, he tends to run out in front and just take a crazy amount of damage. So if he's also invincible, um, especially with his barbarian spawning and stuff, he can do some serious damage. So I like timing it with the king, timing it with rage spells, just timing it with points in the attack where your troops are just kind of really at full force and they're leaning forward about to take the most damage. Um, so anyway, we'll fast forward. Pretty close attack, but the queen uh, finishes off the base here um, and we will move right along to the next one. Um, let's see, I think we're going over to some of their attacks now. Uh, number six here, King James. Um, this was a hog attack, so a little bit different here. And this is something we don't see very often, but the uh, Warden was used on the Hogs. Um, when it comes to using the Warden on a Queen Walk, I have not seen that at all. That was popular for a while, but I have not been seeing people use the Warden with the Queen. Um, it lets her basically cheat death once in addition to her ability. Um, so it's kind of like a second ability for the queen. And then sometimes the warden can peel off onto a kill squad or onto hogs. So you get that extra just uh, life aura or whatever it's called. Just the extra health buff from being just near the warden regardless of his ability. But I don't think it's uh, great using the queen or using the warden on the queen. Um, you're better off doing a queen walk that you can manage without him. Because it's better to get a lot of troops within his radius. Um, especially like a mass hog or a mass bull or kill squad, um, those tend to get more value than just with the queen, unless you're getting like a very uh, valuable thing from the queen. But often 
very technical, hard to do, and not gonna be the case on most bases. So anyway, the queen does her walk here, um, takes out various buildings, gets the CC troops, and then we'll fast forward. There's the siege machine, interesting deployment there, um, sending in everything like that. And then hogs come out of it, and then gonna use the warden's tomb right over that giant bomb. So interesting how it was used, basically saved having to use a heal spell. Um, I would have used the heal, then the tomb, like later on the queen to also help those skeletons out, but honestly it didn't matter that much because as the hogs pass by the queen, there's so many bodies in that area that the skellies don't get taken out. They were able to grab the queen, not the king though, he's kind of too far away. Healers switch onto the hogs, which was nice. But um, yeah, the warden got some good value there. You can see he's kind of running away from the king here. And uh, that's a way you can use him is on your hogs, especially if you're doing a attack where you're gonna try to skelly down the queen. If you can coincide the warden's eternal tomb, if you can use it as the skeletons are taking out the queen, that's double value, especially because the hogs would probably be taking a lot of damage at that point. So I've been, as I watch these attacks, I think a few of them have been early in my opinion. I'm not a Town Hall 11, I'm not a Town Hall 12, but just for, in my opinion, a few of these could have been used a little bit later just to grab more value, but kind of splitting hairs because these were three-star attacks anyway. Um, this next one is a, it's kind of a dip attack. It's basically a Town Hall 10 base, but I like the way the Warden was used. We won't focus too much on the attack. We'll just basically look at how the Warden was used here because um, that's mainly why we're watching this. Um, so in comes the kill squad, a little bit discombobulated. I think the queen's gonna go the wrong way, but the timing of the warden was nice here. Uh, right there, as everything lurches for a giant bomb, the bowlers go one way. I think this might've been the best timing, even though it was so discombobulated, the kill squad kind of going every which way. It was done at that right moment where they were kind of engaging the CC. They're able to take it out with the poison and everything but you can see things are about to jump different ways. That's when you're most likely to hit those giant bombs. So it's a great time to use it. And um, that's when you're most likely to have your troops start taking damage, not just your tanks, but your bowlers, your heroes, because things are starting to split up. And that's when the tanks no longer are tanking as troops lurch forward and spread out. That's kind of what I've been emphasizing. Um, so anyway, this base was obviously crushed because it was kind of a dip attack, but um, that'll do it for that attack there. And then I have one just fun attack I want to look at just because it was such a nice attack. Got to show it by Agent. Um, very creative and um, swagged the Warden's ability and had about 20 loons left. Well, I don't even know if he has 20 loons total. I guess with the CC loons, maybe. But had a ton of balloons left up at the end of this one. Crazy attack. Three lightnings and an earthquake. Big investment takes down uh, one air defense and the Inferno Tower, but opens up a very, very nice walk. Um, this is some incredible value that was otherwise impossible with that Inferno Tower there. So the queen's gonna walk on in. We'll go times two just for sake of time here. Nice few balloons are gonna be kind of incrementally put on various defenses to start taking them out. Almost gets that Wizard Tower as well. Um, E-Dragon, not gonna do a whole lot against the queen there in the CC. And then Queen steps up, takes out the defensive Queen. Then she'll just continue walking down this moat. There's a nice balloon trade here on the Archer Tower, which I, I really liked. And also the cleanup minion already down. Uh, just everything taken into account here. But let's um, continue to watch here because the Warden was used with the Queen. And this is because the Queen Walk was so big, so important, um, so much value to be gotten that the queen needed that extra life potentially. Now you can see he hasn't even used, because the timing was so nice, hasn't even actually used either the queen's ability or the warden's ability. This attack is insane how crushed this base is. Look at, I don't think, I think there's over 20 balloons left up. I honestly do, even though there's like only 23 or 24 total in the entire attack. Um, just nothing died here. Not even that last lava hound, so. This base is crushed, swags the queen's ability, can also swag or not swag the warden's ability. So I thought I'd show that just to kind of, you know, get an attack out there that was creative and worthy of showing in a video. But anyway, that will do it. I hope this video kind of helped you guys get an idea of how you want to best utilize the Grand Warden. 
and his eternal tomb. But that will do it, and I'll see you guys later. Bisect the Tron out.